Okay. Do we have it playing on some other thing like okay. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to the Friday link up. We've got some really cool uh, footage from on Friday. On Sunday, last, uh, last night. Uh, yeah, we put it on the Facebook on Sustainer Claus last night. The kids at the BBC uh, talking about the climate strike. Okay. <laughs> um, we have haven't gotten any information about uh, what we should be talking about today. It's or is it just? It's yeah, okay. You're at the, in the front line, so we're just trying to see what's yeah. going on with you and let's any, yeah. any updates. Yeah, let's just have a nice, relaxed chat. I, I'm guessing it's kind of cold there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really cold. My so negative we, you, you can rub no, your hands no. together and uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about are there more and more people <laughs> learning about the kids' climate march? Actually, there's not that many people here today because we're in the middle of the Christmas holidays. Ah. So I think a lot of people are way in different parts of the country visiting family. Uh, so we're not that many people. We've got like, you know, a solid group. I think we're maybe 20 people, but yeah, <laughs> probably not even that. That's wonderful. Are they actually 20 people that are, are joining you or are they just observing? Uh, they're part of it. Yeah, Staying part of here, it. Talking, chatting, we've got our little cardboard with a uh, five strike on it and, you know, a school strike for the school. Fridays for Future signs, exactly. a few of them. Great, that's fantastic. So more and more people are seeing it. Exactly. Everyone and, that drives past. <laughs> yeah, yes. Do they do they honk? Do they make a sound no, with the car? The, some of them wave to us. <laughs> Generally people look away for some reason. Yeah. Try to not see us. They avoid us. Because they get very uncomfortable, at least here in Sweden when you bring up things. Uh, there are certain things that you just don't speak about, and climate is one of them, because it makes people really uncomfortable no. and feel ashamed. It makes them feel so, ashamed. What, why do you think they feel ashamed? Because they know they're in the wrong and they should be doing something about it, but they don't actually want to do something about it, and they don't want to you know, put themselves out there and change their lifestyle and stuff. So that makes them feel ashamed of what they're not doing, so they just avoid it. Wow, I think, that's, I that's, that's I really interesting. Uh, what do you think? It's the industries that they they work in, the companies they work in. What do you think the companies are doing to encourage or discourage? Well, I definitely think companies are discouraging. I can't talk from experience because I'm still in school, but. <laughs> Uh, I don't think that, you know, big companies are encouraging their workers to go strike because that's not very effective. Um, but I mean, I hope there are some that are really positive and encouraging, but I doubt it to be honest, unless it's for things that are working for climate change and equal rights and stuff. Right. Uh, I'm, I'm wondering, I guess you didn't have a chance to see or hear uh, the students uh, chatting at the BBC. We, we, no, no. we have not. Okay. Um, 
I sent oh, it in oh, the yeah. chat thing, but I can send it in a private message as well. Um, because it was very, very interesting. Um, we, we had Roger. <laughs> Roger was there. And, and <laughs> Do you remember Roger's name? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. It's Roger the reality rooster right it's a good name so, so his his job is to is to wake people up right wake them up yeah like a rooster wakes people up yeah and i mean he's like it's a silly toy but it, it's it's to bring attention and put a smile on people's face that we need to wake up and I'm, that's why I ask you these questions, and hopefully we have a chance to play play the uh, interview later. Um, but this is the question we're asking people: is you know, are you are you aware of what the students are doing every Friday? They're bringing attention to the fact that their future is is in jeopardy. It's a real problem. And are the are the parents looking into it? Are the parents doing anything? And I, I, that's what I want to hear: what's happening where you are, so that we start to influence the parents. Um, I don't know what's being done. We're, we're, we're talking about it. We're making plans. I think at the moment we're planning on publishing a few newspaper articles about the subject. Uh, we're going to make a short film, I think we'll talk about this next week, about uh, steps that the parents can take to support their children in this. I also think that I'm going to write an article that I'm going to send in to a, a more well-read newspaper about it. But um, besides that, I'm not quite sure what, what's happening. No, well, that's, a, that's a fantastic step. That's a fantastic start. Because, you know, I think maybe we talked about it last week, but uh, that's, in my opinion, that's the way we can make this really accelerate. The students yeah. are doing the actual work. You're doing the hard, what we call the hard lifting, you know. <laughs> You're doing the really hard stuff. But, you know, you don't have the authority. That's the problem. You know, you're, you're not in charge. <laughs> so, so, so we have to go kind of levels and levels up from the bottom. Yeah. You and I, are, we're all at the bottom. <laughs> so we need you to, but we need your experience. Who's, who's checking it out there? Who's somebody visiting? Uh, yeah, that's just... A few other people here, so we're gonna have to go in a in a small bit. Okay, let, let's show introduce us to some of the people that are coming around. Okay, <laughs> introduce you to some of the people hanging around. Um, <laughs> what happened now? Uh -oh. oh no! <laughs> stay, stay within the signal radius. Wait, what's happening? Wherever you are. Wait, what's happening? I don't know. You don't know, the, the Zoom thing, the, the Zoom thing is not working. Well, oh no, the link. my phone is too cold. Yeah, it's it's so cold, our phones are malfunctioning. Ah, <laughs> oh god. <laughs> so I don't think that's very good, so I think we're going to have to... Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll start playing this video in the stream and uh, oh. I, I sent it to the chat okay. group, so if you go okay, in cool. somewhere warm I think it's... Uh, take a look at it, it's really interesting. It was a proper action at the BBC. There was nobody in or out uh, for the whole day uh, last Friday. And there were quite a few uh, students yeah. demonstrating with us. Okay, so what is your plan? Can we say again? What our plan is... Um, well, at the moment we're trying to get more media attention from like, newspapers and stuff. I think. We were featured in a children's news show. It was it yesterday? I think it was yeah. yesterday. So that was pretty cool. I think that will bring a lot of attention to younger children. We need to put uh, more pressure on the main media. Too. Exactly. But we need to put more Speaking pressure on the main media. And, you know, the bigger newspapers and the TV. And yes, I uh, agree with you. So let me uh, suggest one thing before you, if you have to go, before yeah. you have to go. Um, yeah. Okay. 
You know, you see this behind us, the SDG wish list, the children, the yeah. kids wish list. This is something I started at the uh, COP, at the, uh, at the uh, Conference of Parties, the UN Climate Change Conference in Katowice, yeah. Poland. And what we're wanting to do now, the kids, some kids started to list what they want. Well, it was for Christmas, but you know, Christmas is past now. So it's what you want in the future. Yeah. And uh, maybe if you could yes. encourage your friends uh, to, to go actually to the oh, website, uh, sdgchallenge.com, it's, uh, it's here. Anyway, I'll, I'll, I'll show you what it is. But if you could go okay. there and uh, you know put your name in as someone who is wanting to put their wish list in front of the world, so we start to build okay. up uh, many, many, many contacts around the world on what kids want to solve the SDGs, and of course, it's it completely in tune with um, Fridays for the Future. So, uh, so if you would do that, that would be really actually great. And 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 also your your article about parents. Okay, yeah. whatever you're writing, here's the SDG challenge. I'll put this up here. Oh, cool. This one. Yeah, play the video. Yeah. Okay. So I don't know if you can see that, but anyway, there is sdgchallenge.com. Yeah. Check that out. Please share once you've got your article, even before you have it published. Uh, yeah. Share the article with me. Make sure your name is clearly on it, and maybe your school and 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 your town and all yeah. and that kind of information. And let's start to send them to sustain a clause. Okay, send those letters. Yeah. You know, like a, so I'll do one in English and in Swedish then. And that, both, both, both yeah. Sw Swedish and okay, English cool. if possible. Uh, but the, yeah. let's let's imagine all around the world, kids are sending a letter to sustain yeah. a clause of what they yeah. want from their parents. Mm. Yeah. Right, and you yeah. tell them, tell them what they want, and let's publish this letter on the naughty and nice list. <laughs> of, of the of the uh, part of the problem and who's part of the solution. yeah exactly and you know maybe some kids will put in their uh, message well there's a factory down the street which is part of the problem yeah and and that might act, cause the parents who maybe work for that company to think yeah do you like the idea. I like yeah. the idea a lot. Okay, so let's do this every Friday, yeah. every okay. Wednesday. <laughs> Not every day, but you know, let's do it once a week. Get kids around the world to send a letter to sustain a clause and what your wish is, and let's make that happen. Sound like a plan? Yeah, yeah. I'm good. <laughs> well, We've got, to, we've got to be going now. Okay. But, um, yeah, don't freeze. I have really something for you. what we're going to play now. So. Um, yeah, please okay. have a look at the link when you have a chance. Uh, well yeah, done. Ho, ho, ho. Thank you. Bye. Merry <laughs> Xmas. Bye. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <laughs> well, my name is Alma. Alma? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm Theodore. Theodore. Yeah. I'm Lily. Lily. I'm Hester. Hester? Yeah. Hester, good to see you, Hester. And, and so look, we're outside the BBC and uh, we're, with, uh, we're with LCP, the Low Carbon Panda, and Roger the Reality Rooster. Uh, Roger the Reality Rooster is, of course, waking us up to uh, the reality of, of, of the climate crisis. Friday, <laughs> Friday is, if, what is it? Friday's for future. Friday's for future, and that's the future, that's actually your future, right? Yes. Um, so so let's, let's talk a little bit about what are the things that you need? We will repeat a little bit of what we talked before, but you know, what are the things that you need uh, to help you, um, you know, be Fridays of the future and and and, and live a, a a great life. You know, you you deserve a great life ahead of you. Um, I think something that is really important for um, like kids striking every Friday is support from all the parents like and um, people in positions of power. 
um, obviously it's our voice that um, should be heard but just having a bit of support from adults, for example people at school or our parents really helps out a lot. People don't tend to listen to children as much and I mean my parents are really in support of me doing this and our school is actually quite good. It's more the students who dis dismiss it but if um, our school, like our school is doing a great job, our head teacher wants um, us to start a project to see what we can do at our school. Um, our physics teacher told us all to switch to renewable energy sources. So that's great and it's really encouraging I think like, to have um, support from our establishment. We're outside the BBC right now, so what is it the BBC needs to do? Um, well, that, yeah, the reason we're here is because the BBC needs to tell, spread the message. I mean, we can say what we want, but there are only so many people who will hear us if no one's spreading our word. It's, it's so important to have people passing the word, spreading the story, and telling everyone what's happening and what we can do about it. And that's what the Fridays for Future is about. It's about just spending a day to tell people that it's wrong and that something needs to happen. The BBC reached so many people in so many places that um, them talking about it would make such a difference because a lot of people also like know about climate change but not enough and they don't know how they can help. So the BBC talking about it would just like make everyone understand things like better and be more in the know and, and change. And um, yeah, so I think that would be good. Even right now, like I don't understand why we're right in front of the BBC yet we don't see any journalists coming out and uh, filming the like people around here in the back streets next to the side entrances but we don't see any cameras that really just like pushing us to the side and not realizing how important it is to us to young people to all the generations everywhere around the world I just think it's like a problem that needs to be solved isn't it shameful yeah it's incredible I mean, isn't it amazing? It's incredible that here's a here's a news organization. They've got hundreds of cameramen. Yeah. They've got hundreds of cameramen. It's a news organization yeah. and, and journalists. Yeah, yeah. That's their business. Yeah. It's it's also because like I don't think they see it this way because it not only affects them but their children and their grandchildren and the future of everybody. So to them, we're just protesting for for like something random. They don't really care. But later, when they're going to see the future generations of their families get affected, they'll realize and regret not helping. And so it's really important for them to notice now, because now is when you can make a difference. And time is running out, and if you don't make a difference now, then it's going to be too late, and our world's just going to come crashing and down. I think, I mean, everyone's been affected by this at least some point in their lives, and most people still continue to be. People just, it hasn't sunk in how much of an emergency this is, how much the climate is just breaking down. It happens like all around me, the people at my school laugh at the idea of going to protest the climate change, they shrug it off. And that's happening at higher levels as well, so in the BBC they just do what they're told to because they get stuck in this, in this system that we're so used to. And it, it's even happening with world leaders, for example, at the COP24 meetings, um, the US, uh, Kuwait, Russia, um, um, Saudi Arabia, they, they weren't going to, they were choosing not to welcome the IPCC report that says that we only have 12 years to change this because that means 12 more years of profit that they make off of oil. Yeah, that's not going to make a difference if the world is ended. They're, they're blinded by this profit that they make. Um, they're blinded by how used to the idea of global warming they are, that it's not sinking in anymore, and that's what needs to happen. And the BBC can help that, the BBC can make that happen, but yet they're choosing not to. How does this make, how does this, how does this make you feel? What is the feeling in your, about your future, about the next few years, about your, uh, about yourself? And Quite, like, to put it in very simple words, for like, one to the best of words, it's, it's just not fair. I mean, it's our future, it's the future of the less developed countries, and yet we are the people who have no say in it whatsoever. And we want our voice to be heard, but the people who are in power, the people who it's not going to affect, are not doing anything about it. The government, the politicians, the media. But how does it make you feel? They're not broadcasting it, and it's just... The head's shape is saying it's wrong. disgusting. Yeah. Okay, here is, how does it make you feel? Terrified. Terrified I'm of what? Scared of the future, scared of what, what's going to happen in the future. And I'm just like scared and confused why people don't 
think that this is important enough to broadcast around the world and why people don't listen to us like just because we're one young children doesn't mean that we don't have that our ideas are, are as strong and are as important as everybody else's i just feel that it's just awful how like they just kind of like us inside what does it make you feel like doing keep protesting and keep trying to make up um what we had until it is heard yeah i i agree with the i also it's like really scary because we really don't know what's gonna happen and i feel like we can feel things about this because like we have done research and we're more conscious but other people our age we often say that they dismiss it and they sort of don't really care but that's not really it it's just they don't know enough to care about it because they no one is teaching them and for example we do it in geography which is really good but i knew so many other schools and so many of my friends are just clueless they just hate global warming climate change like that sentence being thrown around everywhere all the time so to them it's like nothing it's just another rumor or whatever because no one's really informing us which is the future generation which is like are we going to get affected about what's actually going to happen to us so we i think we're all just really confused and a bit like yeah, it's disgusted. Yeah. 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 Disgusted is a really strong word. Um, it's, it's true. As a, how, how would you not feel disgusted that the people who are supposed to be... When you're brought up, you're brought up to feel that the old generation to take care of you. They're going to give you a future that you can be proud of and that you can live in. But they're not. They're giving you a future that's just destroyed. They're destroying our future. And that's disgusting. And it's, it's disheartening to see that... It's, we have to get out there, we have to leave school to come here today and protest when we should be able to rely on adults to give us the future that we want and that we need and that they grew up with. And I think for me as well, it's sort of past the point where I'm just shocked or disheartened or afraid. Like right now I'm angry, I'm frustrated. Why aren't they doing anything? We, it's so difficult for young children and for people in less developed countries to do anything, even though we're the people who are going to be affected before anyone else. It's our future, we're the ones who are going to grow up in this, you see our children grow up in this world, and it's being ruined by all the people in power who aren't going to be here to, like, to feel the full like experiences that, that we are going to feel, because Why they want to be more profitable. It's really sad, because we're trying to do our best, but like sometimes our best is just not good enough and we're obviously going to keep going until we get um, like really good results but like right now not much is happening and it's really hard because like as you can see we're only four young children and there are, there are so many people and so many things that could be happening that are happening which is really disheartening yeah. and, and hard. something else I think that I mean I've tried to get so many of my other friends to come to protest but one of the things that, like, the reason that they said that they didn't want to come, the most, the reason I've heard repeated most often, is that they said it's not going to make a difference. That's the thing that people are told, that we get told it's not going to make a difference. That makes us think, yeah, that makes us think, hope, that makes us think that, and hope isn't, like, everything. Like, we're here because we hope that it'll make a difference, and we hope that we can make a change, but by people telling us that, oh, it won't make a change, by why are you doing this? by BBC not broadcasting, they're telling us to lose hope and to stop dreaming that we can change things and change the world that we're going to live in in the future. And I think that's the most important thing to have hope in. Yes. That we live in a better world than our parents have and that generations before have. Well, what do you think your parents want for you? Well, I, I know, like, personally, Hester is the one really that, like, uh, uh, like two weeks ago we went to the 10 Downing Street uh, protest but um, my parents when I told them they were really impressed and really uh, proud of me that for like for me to go and really like protest and do things and they were uh, they they just like very proud and not shocked but most kids don't do this like which is a sad thing like most kids don't ask their parents to like go to protest for climate change but most kids should and if and parents are incredibly proud of their children and I'm sure your parents are part of you yeah. and your parents are part of you for doing this and for protesting for what we believe in and what we want to change in our future because it's up to us to make a difference. I know for a fact my parents are very involved in climate change but not involved in climate change but like they care a lot about it and the fact that they just know that we care too is really like like feels really nice and uh, 
Um, and I think every child should take part of, or also parents should talk to their children more and just that relationship about with like deciding to, to help is so good because if I want to go to a protest, my mom's definitely going to say, yeah, she's going to see, let's go together, let's do our best to make change. It must be hard for children who ask their parents, oh, I want to do this, and their parents go, oh, but it doesn't really matter, like, we don't care. But I'm, I'm really happy that, and, and I know they probably are too, that our parents are, like, feel really strongly about making this change. Also, I think that most parents would say they want the best for their child, but the thing is, they don't know. They're not aware of what is best for their children. They, most adults are used to this system. You go to school, go to university, get a job and make money. You have to do what's best. And that's, they think that that is what's best for your kid. And yet this obsession that we have with money, this system that requires us to always make money, make profit, is what's leading us to so much consumerism, to so much dismissal of this like breakdown that's happening right now. So I think that even parents who do want the best for their children aren't necessarily aware of what the best really is. Guys, if you're students, it's not like embarrassing and you're not gonna get back to school and everyone's gonna laugh at you. Like, that's just so stupid and immature. If you want to make a change, make the change you want to see. And you don't, yeah, don't be scared of what people are gonna say about you because that's just sorry for my language, that's just bullshit. Like, it's so pointless to think in that mindset because otherwise you're never gonna be brave enough to do anything. And if you want to see a change, you need to make it and you need to do it now. And, and how yeah. about how about be a hero? Actually, exactly. you're heroes. You're all heroes. Be the tent you want to see. Why not be part of it and be exactly. one of the heroes? In the end of the day, we're going to be the majority, and the people that are there are going to be the minority. So you're going to be wanting here to be here and joining us. That's great. So send us a Christmas, an Xmas message. <laughs> Merry Xmas. <laughs> Have you ever wondered who should say? Thank you.